Hey, what's going on, YouTube? This is CJ. I'm going to go ahead and jump right into this update. I've been very, very busy over the last couple of weeks. Anyone to join my live feed, you're well aware of what's going on. But for those that didn't, I'm going to update you this video. In a nutshell, I've been slacking on my water changes, and we're going to talk about the consequences. Now, some of you guys may have never noticed this, but I've been dealing with algae issues on my glass, you know, just like everyone else in the hobby. What I've done to try to prevent it is, you know, using my mag float. I notice if you clean this glass every day, every other day, it really prevents this hard algae from building up. But eventually, you know, it does catch up with you. So also something I've noticed, you know, with curved glass tanks, you really can't take advantage of any of the flippers or any of the, you know, easy to use scrapers that prevent your hands from getting in the system. So I just let it build up to the point to where I can't stand it anymore and then go ahead and get my hands wet. Now, the second issue I'm dealing with is going to be this coralline algae. You guys may have already noticed a few spots of it on the glass around the bottom of the tank, but it's also growing all over the top and the back wall and all over my equipment. Now, when I first started my system, when I first started the hobby, you know, my first goal was to grow this purple stuff. You know, that good old purple stuff everyone says is great for your reef tank. But honestly, I'm going to think it's overrated. You know, it's definitely signs of a healthy tank and good water quality, which honestly, I'm going to admit, when I first started my system, I really didn't, you know, I didn't have. That's why this stuff didn't grow. But here over the last couple of months, it's really taken off. So besides having to add this to my maintenance routine, you know, keeping it off my power heads, off my return nozzles, and more importantly, off the back wall of my tank, I just can't stand the look of a purple back wall. Not to mention, I think the black background keeps all the focus on my scape and corals, which is the whole point of, you know, the way I set my tank up. So, you know, besides those things, I also kind of keep in mind, coralline algae directly competes with corals in your system, meaning it uses the same alkalinity and the same calcium that your corals use to grow. And it also affects your parameters. So the more of this stuff in your tank, the more your alkalinity is gonna drop and the more your calcium is gonna get used up. So, you know, is this stuff really worth it? I don't know, but I'm gonna do my best to try to manage it and keep it from taking over everything in my system and cluttering everything up. So for anyone that's new to my channel or if you're curious about my filtration, everything's technically behind the tank it's an all-in-one system and it does not get simpler than this guys the only thing i'm running on my system is a tunzi 9004 skimmer a jbj auto top off a nano algae scrubber from santa monica filtrations one bag of c cams carbon pretty much in a mesh bag setting in my sump and of course for biological filtration i'm running c cams pond matrix now just keep that stuff stuffed in my filter trays this is all i use nothing else guys this is pretty much responsible for keeping all of my ammonia, nitrites, and nitrates completely undetectable. You know, besides water changes, this is where all the magic happens. So highly recommend this media for anyone that's curious. Definitely check it out. It lasts forever. I've used this same stuff for years, and it's never let me down. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at the reef. You know, that's how it looks roughly two days after a water change. And honestly, you know, I fell way behind on my routine over this last week or so. Got really busy and I almost missed a full week of water changes. Now, for those that are, you know, following me, you already know how significant that is. But for those that are new, I don't dose anything on my reef tank. No supplements, no alkalinity, nothing. I maintain my tank with pure water changes. Now, it's definitely a uh, tough routine to maintain. I'm looking at two to three five gallon water changes a week. And my time, you know, for the time it takes to mix it and to actually do the maintenance on the tank, if I miss those changes, definitely has some negative effects so we're going to cover that later in the vid but for now let's go ahead and cover my livestock you know coral get you guys updated on what's going on in the system now as far as livestock goes honestly still haven't had any new additions but for anyone that missed the last update i did lose one of my fish my christmas ras had that guy in the system for about six or seven months definitely enjoyed that fish but i had a mishap during a water change you know aggressively siphoning my sand bed and I accidentally stabbed him with my siphon hose a lot harder than I realized because it ended up killing him. So, you know, definitely a lesson learned. Definitely something I'm going to have to, you know, replace. But for now, I'm rolling with the same stock list. So besides that incident with my Christmas rice, everyone else in the tank has been doing fantastic. You know, everyone's getting along well for the most part. Eating, you know, happy, healthy. Haven't seen any issues as far as the ick in my system flaring back up. I've been waiting, you know, I've been waiting and waiting and waiting. Usually every four or five months, I see something flare back up, but it has not happened. And it's been over six months now. So I'm thinking I'm, you know, possibly past the ick issue in my system. But 
That does not mean it can't be any other drama in your tank. And by drama, I'm talking specifically about this maroon clownfish. Now keep in mind, this is expected behavior. Everyone knows these guys are really territorial whenever they start hosting an anemone. And for the most part, he's been, you know, well behaved. I've seen him nip at a chromus every once in a while. Doesn't bother anyone else, except when I put this turkey baster in the tank. This guy cannot stand the turkey baster. But as long as he goes after this, not my hand, I can live with it. Now, the last few weeks, I have been slowly reintroducing shrimp to my system. You know, starting with a coral bandit shrimp and then followed by this fire shrimp. This is the most recent addition. Now, I'm well aware I have some possible shrimp eaters, you know, specifically my flame hawkfish and my wrasse. But it still doesn't explain what really happened. You know, a few months ago, I lost all of the shrimp in my tank. First, I blamed it on the fish killing them. But with these guys, you know, molting multiple times and doing, you know, actually pretty well in my system. It makes me wonder if maybe it was a water quality incident or something else that killed them. So we'll find out. Still more shrimp to come. I'm just glad these guys are doing well and I'm looking forward to adding more. So let's talk about a few of my corals. You know, specifically this Hollywood Stunner Chalice Coral. They have reputations for being very fast growers. And honestly, I didn't see any of that at first. But over the last couple of months, this guy has really taken off. So, you know, hopefully he starts plating upward and not, you know, stinging anything with his sweepers. You know, time will tell, but growth is growth. You know, I'm happy about it. Now, the next coral I want to highlight for you guys are going to be these yellow polyps. Started off with about seven or eight heads, and these things are going crazy fast. They've only been in the tank for a little over a month. And I'm already up to about 20 heads or so. So, you know, I'm looking forward to that yellow splash of color. I think it fits well with the tank. You know, hopefully it doesn't end up being a pest situation, but either way, I'm just happy with the growth. Now, the last coral I'm going to share with you guys is going to be this orange digitata. Now this is significant because when I added this to the tank a few weeks ago, I accidentally broke it in half and both pieces that broke have new growth growing on the tips of them. So definitely, you know, a good sign for things in my tank. And besides the pallies kind of, you know, encroaching on their space, I think these cores are gonna do well in my system. So that's pretty much gonna cover everything that's happened over the last few weeks, at least worth noting, you know, as far as fish losses and inverts doing well, and those few cores are highlighted. So this point let's talk a little bit about you know what i've noticed with missing those water changes and future plans so to be perfectly honest you know i'm starting to feel like my tank's kind of stuck in neutral at this point you know it was a point in time over the last six or seven months to where i was adding corals every week you know at least going to the lfs every month two or three times a month to make changes and you know additions subtractions trades whatever the case may be but here recently I've just kind of switched my mind frame, you know, instead of adding more corals, let's try to maintain my water quality a little bit more and, you know, make things grow a little bit more in my tank. So with that being said, that's kind of been my approach to my system. You know, don't overcomplicate things. It's not too much equipment, you know, no controllers, nothing like that. Just maintain everything with just pure water changes, no dosing, no supplements, nothing that I can't test for, nothing I don't know about, you know, just sticking in my lane sticking with what I know and not biting off more than I can chew. So with all that being said, you know, I gotta ask myself a question and be completely honest with myself. You know, can I really maintain this tank with water changes? You know, I've been doing it for over four months, you know, two to three, five gallon water changes a week, roughly 40 to 60% of my tank's water volume. Everything's been doing well, honestly, I can't lie to you guys. You know, I've tested it, you know, with Salifred API, alkalinity has never taken a big drop. You know, I've actually gotten to the point now to where I've realized that my tank is using 0.3 or so, um, 0.3.4 uh, DKH of alkalinity per day. So I've calculated that, you know, a water change with 10 or 11 DKH reef crystals bumps it up almost 0.5 during that water change. And it's gotten to the point to where I've kind of figured that out, but that's not the problem. You know, the problem comes into play is when you can't keep up with your routine. And that's what happened to me this week. You know, this is the first time it's happened over the last four and a half months to where I've gotten too busy to even have time to do a water change or at least all three of my water changes a week, meaning beginning of the week, midweek, and the end of the week. And it really has some severe effects on my reef tank. And that's gonna bring me to my next, you know, thought my journey in the hobby, coming back to dosing. So before we go any further, let me give you guys a quick snapshot of where my tank is today. I literally just checked these parameters tonight before this video. Now my calcium, still elevated, 490. 
Magnesium still elevated around 1440. You know, phosphates, pretty good. Uh, 0 0.024. When I had a check, I just checked them. Nitrates, undetectable. 0 0.2 part per million, I'm guessing. On the Salifer kit, barely any color at all. So those, you know, are reasonable, elevated, but not terrible as far as the reef tank goes. The issue comes in with my alkalinity. After a week's time with no water changes, it dipped below natural seawater, and it's currently reading at 6 dKH. Now that's two days after a water change, after I missed a full week. So it was probably below six during that time. And that's pretty much what sparked this video because at this point, I had a fork in the road. Is my schedule gonna allow me to keep up with my simple way of maintaining my tank or do I have to dose? So let's talk about it. So what's my plan for the immediate future? Well, I'm gonna do what I can control. I got a bunch of water, I got a bunch of salt. I'm gonna water change the heck out of my tank until I get that DKH back up to where it needs to be. Next thing I'm gonna do is invest in a different test kit for my alkalinity. Looking into getting a HANA checker for alkalinity so I can compare results. And as long as they're similar to Salifer, then I can start thinking about dosing. The last thing I wanna do is dose blindly, meaning, you know, checking with one test kit, trusting that test kit, and then nuking my tank by overdosing something. So now when it comes to dosing, Considering the only parameter that is low is my alkalinity, I'm not gonna go the calc route this time because it, it, that actually increases your alkalinity and calcium. I'm gonna go the route of just dosing alkalinity by itself. Whether it's baking soda or purchasing the alkalinity solution BRS and doing it individually, who knows? You know, I'll decide which way I'll go at that point once I get to that point, but for now, water change, water change, water change, get a secondary test kit for alkalinity, uh, then I'm going to look into dosing. So I'll keep you guys updated on that situation, you know, as time has it. But for now, hopefully this gives you guys an idea where the roof tank is today and my thoughts as far as dosing in the hobby, and I'll keep it there. So other than that, I'm going to cut this video here, guys. So as always, hey, you guys like, comment, subscribe. You guys do what y'all do. Y'all be easy. Happy reefing.